Welcome to Liverpool Cathedral on this rather stormy Christmas Eve. At least here in the cathedral we're out of the wind and the wet and we've got our Christmas tree and we've got the crib so we're absolutely ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus for the last time in this millennium. Words and music will tell the story and the service itself will underline the significance of his life broken and shared for us all. So please join with us in the words of our next carol. O oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise to you, Almighty God and Heavenly King, who sent your Son into the world to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that as we are born again in him, so he may continually dwell in us and reign on earth as he reigns in heaven with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
How lovely on the mountains are the feet of the herald who comes to proclaim prosperity and bring good news, the news of deliverance, calling to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your watchmen raise their voices and shout together in triumph. For with their own eyes, they shall see the Lord returning in pity to Zion. Break forth together in shouts of triumph, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has taken pity on his people and has ransomed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all nations and the whole world from end to end shall see the deliverance of our God. When in former times God spoke to our forefathers, he spoke in fragmentary and varied fashion through the prophets. But in this, the final age, he has spoken to us in the Son whom he has made heir to the whole universe and through whom he created all orders of existence. The Son who is the effulgence of God's splendor and the stamp of God's very being and sustains the universe by his word of power. When he had brought about the purgation of sins, he took his seat at the right hand of majesty on high, raised as far above the angels as the title he has inherited is superior to theirs. This is the word of the Lord.
The Lord be in our hearts and on our lips. And we Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favours. This is the Gospel of Christ. Please be seated. Well, after a long wait, he came. His arrival was heralded with music. He descended from the skies, came to the city, into a cavern, and the people worshipped. And his name was Paul McCartney. Last week, Liverpool welcomed back its famous son. Via the internet, he played the cavern to a worldwide audience of millions. The songs of the Beatles have become anthems of the world. John Lennon's Imagine voted the most popular song of the century, and All You Need Is Love will be sung in the dome to welcome in the next millennium. These lyrics have become the creeds of today. They look at the world's problems and dream about solutions. No different, really, from the song the angels sang to the shepherds, except that their lyrics came up with a very different answer. Last week, John Simpson, the BBC's world affairs editor, did a series on Newsnight. 
At the end of the second millennium, he spoke about the four horsemen of a new apocalypse. These are the forces that threaten our survival. Environmental disaster, disease, war, and crime stalk the planet. Last year was the hottest on record. Environmental catastrophe looms with the destruction of the ozone layer. The climate changes are sinister. Disease is sweeping the earth with 50 million people already victims of the AIDS virus. And other even more deadly viruses are marshalling their forces and mounting an offensive on humanity. In this century, there have been more wars than at any other time. Millions have fallen in conflicts between tribes and nations. Crime has moved from being small-time and local into a worldwide epidemic with international syndicates peddling in drugs and arms and corruption. Now, this is not the kind of message that most of us want to hear on Christmas Eve. It's not the sort of thing to get you into a party mood. A bit like coming out of Anfield celebrating a win by Liverpool, only to be told that Michael Owen is on the transfer list and going to Manchester United. But before you switch off, here's a question. What sort of lyrics would we have given the angels to sing? Maybe they should have sung, For unto you is born this day in the city of David an economist. God knows that we need a fairer world economy. At the very least, we need to relieve the debt of poor countries whose children are dying in poverty. Or maybe the angel should have sung, For unto you is born this day in the city of David, an environmentalist. God knows too that we need to take seriously the state that we have got the planet into. Major decisions have to be taken to save the earth. But what the angels sang was something more radical. A song that went straight to the heart. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a forgiver. So many of our problems stem from our own self-centeredness. None of us has a perfectly clear conscience. All of us have messed up and said and done things which add to the sum of human sadness. They rob us of peace, cut us off from God, and drive wedges of division between ourselves. It's to sinners in need of forgiveness that the Holy Child descends this night. After a long wait, he eventually came. His arrival heralded with the music of angels. He descended from the skies, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Through her, he came to the city of Bethlehem and was born in a stable. And the people did worship. His name was Jesus. It means God saves us from our sins. Ever since Jesus lived his life on earth, died and rose again, people have come to him. Over the last 2,000 years, they've asked him to cast out their sin, enter into their lives, and be born in them. This spiritual experience has brought Christians a peace and a determination to work with the Prince of Peace to change the world by turning the hearts of people to God. Liverpool was once the center of a trading empire and amassed great wealth. One of the blemishes on our history 
was the trade in slaves. It was barbaric and degraded black people. Many never survived the journey across the seas. At the last meeting of the council, the Lord Mayor publicly expressed the city's profoundest regret over its involvement in the slave trade and apologized to all who've been desecrated by these actions. It's a sincere gesture to cast out sin from our city. We repent and seek forgiveness. But who will forgive us? The slaves that are dead? Their descendants? The black and ethnic communities who have experienced racism since then? Yes, we seek their forgiveness. The forgiveness of all those whom we have offended. Yet, there is another source of forgiveness. For those things which we have done as a society and as individuals, those things perhaps known only to us and to God. At the heart of Christmas, in the manger at Bethlehem, lies the gift of God's forgiveness. He loves the world so much that he sent his one and only Son, Jesus Christ, so that whoever turns to him and seeks forgiveness should find peace and eternal life. That's why the angels sang, for unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, a forgiver, who is Christ the Lord. Forgiveness is the gift that God has for each and every one of us this night. In the carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, the last verse is a prayer. O Holy Child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. When in a moment we come to sing this hymn, we shall kneel for the last verse to make it our own prayer. For to be sure, on this the last Christmas Eve of this millennium, the Holy Child, Jesus Christ, stands ready to descend on each of us by his Spirit, ready to cast out our sin, longing to enter in, to bring that forgiveness, longing to enter into the hearts of each and every one of us. Please, do not bolt the door of your heart. On this most holy of nights, reach for the handle, turn, and open the door. There he stands, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, loving and forgiving and wanting to enter in. Pray for him to come to you this night. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray, cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels the great glad tidings tell. O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With joy, let us pray to the Lord. In this holy night, your Son, our Saviour, was born in human form. Bless your Church as the body of Christ in the world today that it may be filled with the power of your Holy Spirit. As Christians around the world join in celebration, open our hearts that he may be born in us today. In this holy night, there was no room in the inn for your son to be born. Protect with your love those who have no home those driven out by war or overwhelmed by flood or famine. Bless all who seek to offer help and shelter. Lord, in your mercy. In this holy night, Mary bore Jesus in the pain of labor. Bring comfort to all who suffer or who are in pain today and bless the homes of our land, especially where there are families with young children. Lord, in your mercy. In this holy night, the heavens were lit up with the news of the coming of the Prince of Peace. May the light of Christ shine in the dark places of our world tonight. We remember especially Chechnya, Kosovo, Venezuela, to bring peace where there is hostility, trust where there is hatred, and welfare where there is tragedy. Lord, in your mercy, In this holy night, the shepherds in the field heard the good tidings of joy. Bless all those who work tonight to provide essential services, to ensure the safety and well-being of all, and to care for the needs of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this holy night, strangers found the Holy Family and saw the baby lying in the manger. May those who feel shut out find welcome, and may those who feel alone find companionship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this holy night, heaven and earth are bridged by the birth of Christ. Unite us in faith with all those we love, whether here or there. 
may we finally share together in the hope of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. 
In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in unity of life to the glory of your name. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may never more pray and feed us. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer a sign of Christ's peace one to another.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things. He was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Blessed Virgin, and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because in the incarnation of the Word a new light has dawned upon the world. You have become one with us that we might become one with you in your glorious kingdom. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. 
He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We bring before you this bread and this cup and thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through him from whom all good things come, Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink as he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Thank you. 
God our Father, in this night you have made known to us again the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Confirm our faith and fix our eyes on him until the day dawns and Christ the morning star rises in our hearts. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, enter into your hearts and fill you with grace to trust his promises and to obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.